Today we are taking PTC Pro from Skyhoy in a slightly unusual direction. We are controlling DJI RS3 Pro and RS4 gimbals. And in practice, this turns the gimbal and whatever camera you mount, like the Sony FX2 or the Lumix BGH1, into a true PDC system. And to make that happen, we have partnered with Middle Things to give PDC Pro smooth and precise gimbal control. And with this combined setup, what we call a combo device, it ties the camera, the lens, and the pan tilt hardware into one unified solution. PDC Pro still gives you instant preset buttons, it has a clean menu navigation, and it has quick device selection. And the real win is that presets cover the whole workflow. The gimbal, the camera, and everything else is all recalled with consistency. And why do we need that? Because users, they don't care how it's all pieced together technically. They just want a PDC camera experience, and Skyhoy technology delivers that. Let's dive in. You select a camera, or a combo device by this camera selector, basically. So let's just see, this is the one with the Sony, and I can just turn it over here to my target, and let's also move the Lumix, so you see that I can control both as if it was a PTC camera. You see there's also a tilt axis, and there is even a zoom function. So when I rotate the joystick, I'm zooming, that's happening on the lens. When I'm using the pan and the tilt, I'm controlling the gimbal, all right? And same is true if I operate the Sony camera, which is slightly off here. Okay, and now one of the first things that I notice here is that it is not exactly like a classic PC camera because the gimbals, they are sort of used to smooth out your operations. And I'm sure this is something you can adjust in the gimbals, but it's just like when you go a little bit to the right, it's like, you know, when you are on a slippery surface with your car, it may, hopefully not your car, or it like like a shopping cart in a mall or whatever, but it's just gliding a little bit to the side. So you sort of need to get used to that um, motion. I get a little bit seasick by it, but it's still pretty cool. And that's how the gimbals operate. But hey, it's a PTC experience that we're having right here. And uh, maybe let's just look at right away, what happens if I save this position on that button, and then I move a little bit to the side here, and then I save this position on another preset button and maybe just move up and a little bit up here. And I save this one as well, all right. So now I can recall the first one and the camera is instantly going to that framing I had. I recall preset number two and it goes here and preset number three. So that's the PDC experience, all the classics, pan tilt, zoom, and also PDC recall. I can do the same for the Lumix camera. So again, just select the camera, you recall a preset by pressing one of these buttons like that, okay? And another preset which has been stored and it's being recalled. Now, the main point in this video is not going through all the camera settings and so forth because the cameras can change. That's the whole point. A combo device allows me to change the cameras. But if you're curious about how the PTC Pro works, we have a menu. Going through this menu will offer you access typically to changes uh, in the camera, settings in the camera. And you can see that if we go to the first page and if we go between these two cameras, you see it's different what we see up there. The same for white balance because those cameras are different and that's how Skyhoy integrate cameras. We made the camera parameter list for the cool FX2 camera into this controller and the same for the Lumix. They are different. This is why the menus sh uh, show you different content. If you had the same two cameras from Sony, you would see the same menu disposition here in these uh, menu items. Okay, so that's one thing I wanted to highlight. We have seen the presets, we have the camera selection, and now look at the UI in front of you because this is coming straight out of PDC Pro. PDC Pro talks directly to these cameras. It does actually not talk directly to the middle things, but I'll get back to that in a moment. But anyway, it is inside the PDC Pro that all the magic happens. This is the UI coming out of it. And you see we are connected to two middle thing devices, which are sitting on the sides of the gimbals, connected to the gimbals. They have an ethernet cable coming out into a network switch. So they have an IP address connected, but you actually see that they have the same IP address in this view. And that is because we are talking to middle things software, which is running on a Mac mini at the current moment. And this is the software from Middle Things that connect to the two um, to, to the two uh, devices sitting on the gimbals. So uh, camera ID number one and number two here can be selected, and this is 
how this this is the software we are talking to and essentially middle things middle control software will give us a visca camera it will expose the gimbal as a visca camera to the pvc pro so through this software we are controlling the gimbals and uh, with the middle things uh, hardware attached to the side of the gimbal handle all right so that's what you see here but you also see each of the two cameras and that's the unique skahoy thing that we have a sony camera sitting uh, on top of this gimbal and there's a blue pill and the blue pill has a USB connection to the Sony camera So all the settings that I can do on Sony's camera like for instance change the um, The iris mode around to something else those settings They are done through the blue pill using the PoE powered network connection here, which is um, what you see uh, delivered from this IP address and accessible right here. The same with the Panasonic Lumix. We are talking straight to the camera in this uh, case because it doesn't have to have a blue pill translation to USB anything. It has um, a network access uh, straight away. So we are talking straight to the camera. And then finally is I have an Atom Mini. And why that? Because when I'm pressing my camera selector, you see that I'm changing the output source. I'm actually routing a using an Atom Mini so that we can see those two different sources in this video recording. And um, that's that's the uh, configuration in here. Let's look at the middle things uh, configuration because I mentioned that in the software we have this camera ID that is sitting right here and um, you set that up for each of these connections. So it's not just the same IP address, it's also camera ID number one and for the other one we are talking to camera ID number two and that is what selects each of the two cameras that has been configured inside of this software. Okay, Now um, the combo device magic really happens, as you can see, that these are individual devices, but they are pieced together in the camera selector. So in the camera selector, the two cameras that I'm selecting, they are essentially shown inside of this table. It's the Sony and it's the Lumix, and it's set with labels in the displays. Another Skahoy feature is that we have OLED displays on our products so that you can easily change the name. We can Let's put in an, an exclamation mark here, and we just change the label of the a camera selector basically and you can call it anything else obviously now uh, with combo devices if you um, toggle show advanced then you will see that we are basically taking device ID number one in the case of the Sony and the Panasonic Lumix cameras because each of these are like the the, the main device that uh, builds the uh, combo device but then as the combo device ID that second ID we are referring to uh, the middle things visca camera which is the PDC a pan tilt axis of the whole setup here. So that's what you see inside of this table and the rest here is basically selecting configurations and also the routing index which is the, the input source on the ATEM switcher that we are using. So tally forwarding is the feature that will allow us to uh, forward tally information from that ATEM switcher if you had a tally lamp on top here. And uh, we also have routing triggers down here and that is what will send a route to the ATEM switcher when you press the buttons. So we are fusing all these technologies together and for the user who operates it from the PDC Pro, he basically just has two cameras he needs to care about. He can recall presets, he can use the joystick to operate each of them. Inside of Reactor, notice how there are always helpful comments for each of these things. So if you wanna learn what a routing trigger is, you have this helpful message coming up here and the same with tally forwarding and so forth. Before we end this video, I wanna show you how you can adjust the pan tilt speed when operating the cameras the gimbals, okay? So in the menu, you can cycle to additional pages and one of the last pages is your pan tilt speed and your zoom speed. So we are currently selecting the Sony camera here. So if I move over to the side, it doesn't take a lot of movement on the joystick and actually I just need to like touch it a little bit and there we go. Okay, and full swing of the joystick, you see how quickly it moves, not always ideal. So what I wanna do is to turn down the speed and now it's at one. So if I move the joystick full swing, you see that it's actually fairly slow okay it's moving quite slowly now uh i want to find something in between so i'll just use four and now full swing of my joystick is actually a pretty fair speed which is much more manageable and that's something that we build into all our controllers so it, it's not only true for this uh setup with combo devices and the gimbals it's also true for ordinary pdc cameras that you can basically moderate the zoom and the pan tilt speed of the joystick in the control panel itself Thanks for watching this video. If you like the kind of content I've just shared, make sure you like and subscribe to our channel because we have a lot of videos coming out all the time about 
broadcast hardware, your favorites it may be, and how Skyhoy hardware can control it. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and X, or you can subscribe to our newsletter. And if you want to talk to a real human being and not an AI anytime, reach out to our sales and support team. They are so happy to talk to you, to learn what you're looking for, to advise you on controller purchase or just, you know, any feedback and input you want, let us know. 